Alright, so I think it's finally time to test cast this bare head ring design that I did a while ago in Blender. And this video is just going to cover some of the process of how I go about test casting a ring like this, and also my experience with using a new resin. So I'm going to be using some Soraya Tech castable resin. And just because of the way that I schedule some of my videos, uh, you might have seen me use this already, but this is really my first experience with using this resin. So to start things off, I'm going to be using the Chi2Box slicing software for this. And for the most part, I'm just going to try using the automatic settings for the supports. But because this is such a big ring, I kind of had a feeling that the medium supports weren't really going to cut it. So I also printed another one using the heavy supports and then added a few extra right by that first contact point where I tend to get the most errors in my prints. And one way that I like to make sure that I'm really putting supports in the right area is to just use the slider over here to the right and just shift it down until I can see that first little contact point of the model. And personally, I've kind of found that adding some extra supports right in this area really helps to get rid of some shifting or warping that I tend to get with some of these larger prints. So for anybody who's curious, uh, these are the printer settings that I'm currently using for this resin. Um, but before you go copy them down, just know that I am using the original version 1 Elegu Mars 3D printer, which uh, I don't think they even sell it anymore. Uh, so it might be a good idea to adjust these settings before using it for your own printer. So I also decided to test a smaller engagement ring too, uh, just to kind of see what would happen. And as you can see, this print took just about six and a half hours to complete. And just as I thought, the medium supports on the bare ring didn't end up fully printing. So uh, I probably just could have added more medium supports, but personally, I'd rather not have too many marks to have to clean up afterwards from breaking them off. The print seemed to come off the build plate pretty easily with just a plastic scraper, and after a quick bath in 99% alcohol, I then just alternated between some warm water and cold water just to wash off the rest, which seemed to work pretty well. And to remove the supports, I just dunked them back into a different cup of warm water for a few seconds just to kind of soften them up enough to easily break off. So I did end up printing another one of these with the heavy supports again just because I wanted to have a couple of these for test casting later on. So if you're looking into this resin, you're probably already aware about a strange quirk that it has, uh, where it really doesn't like to be in contact with oxygen while curing for various sciencey reasons. Uh, so vegetable glycerin seems to be the best solution for keeping oxygen from touching the surface of the print and also providing a way for UV light to hit it. Another common problem about this resin is that it seems to be pretty buoyant in the glycerin, so you'll have to find a way to weigh it down like I'm doing here with just some random things I have on my desk. So I'm really not sure how big of a difference it really makes to have these small bubbles touching the surface. I can't imagine there's much oxygen in them to really be affecting anything, but everybody seems to be on the same page of removing them. So uh, if you want to take a paper clip and try to get rid of them or something, that is totally up to you. Um, or you can just get frustrated like I did and toss them in a vacuum chamber. Thank you. 
So once they were bubble free, I then put them in my homemade curing station to sit for around 10 minutes. Then I just cleaned off the glycerin with a little bit of warm water. And overall I'm pretty impressed with how these prints turned out. Uh, they're definitely not perfect, but it's a pretty good start considering I'm using an older printer. So this first print did have a couple of areas of delamination right behind the ears, and then this area on the face where it looks like the layer shifted a bit. And both of them had these small divots that are left over from breaking off the supports. So I'll definitely have to fill those in with wax and sand them smooth. So in terms of what this stuff feels like to work with, it's kind of like a harder plastic. And when sanding, it makes this really fine dust, which I'm sure is terrible to breathe in. So absolutely use some ventilation or a respirator when working with this stuff. And once they were pretty well cleaned up, I just used my wax carver to attach a few sprues. And one of them I did attach just a few extra, uh, only because the head of these rings are pretty huge and I was kind of expecting some shrinkage in this area, so this was just a bit of a precaution. Uh, and you can see I had to bend the main sprue over to the side uh, just to be able to fit two of these rings inside one flask. And I am doing a tree on this one with a few other models that are going to be underneath which is why the main sprue is so long on this one. And since I use these solid wall flasks, I've been getting in the habit of using some kind of rubberized cord to create some vacuum channels kind of where I need them in the flask. And the idea behind this is to provide some vacuum that draws the metal more towards the side than straight down. And this is something you wouldn't really have to worry about with a perforated flask, um, but it's a pretty good workaround for my setup. So you can see I just attached them to the walls of the flask with a bit of sticky wax, making sure to leave about an inch and a half of room at the bottom. Then after I pour in the investment and leave it to sit for a few hours, I can just pull the cords out with some pliers and it's ready to toss into the kiln. And for anyone who's curious, this is the burnout cycle that I'm currently using for this resin, which seems to be giving me some pretty good results so far. So I start off at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and holding that for two hours, then ramp up to 700 degrees for one hour, before finally taking it to its max temp at 1350 degrees for two hours. Then it's taken down to its final casting temp of a thousand degrees and left to sit for at least an hour before casting. And for these pieces I'm casting in silicon bronze using my electric melting furnace. And here they are after a little bit of cleanup. You can see on one of them I already started removing the sprue marks, and so far they both look really good. Uh, thankfully this one doesn't need the extra sprues like I thought it did. And both of them have some really nice detail, uh, especially over on the teeth. Uh, the teeth are less than a millimeter thick, so I wasn't really sure if they were going to fill in or not. But anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these rings down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.